The presence of the Lord is in this place. Oh, wherever you are, lift up your hands to Him, His word. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The power of the Lord is in this place. Lift up your hand as we worship the Lord tonight. Just worship the Lord. Just worship him. Tell him, Lord, I love you. I thank you. I give you praise for yet another day. I thank you for your awesome greatness. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your spirit, O oh God. I worship your holy name in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I bless you, God. We worship you, God. We honor you, O oh God. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh God. You are wonderful. You are, oh Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Honor you, glory, Lord. We give glory, Lord. As we honor you, you are wonderful. You are worthy, oh God. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Oh, you are wonderful. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship your holy name, O oh God. We love you, Father. We worship you today. We reverence you, God. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. And the church will say a big amen. Hallelujah. Congratulations. I say congratulations. Glory to God. You may be seated in his presence as we break the bread of life, look into the word of God. Hallelujah. Welcome to the 20th day of the 22nd uh, day fasting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome to the 20th day. We are just there. And the Bible says, the end of a thing is better than the beginning thereof. I want to tell you that you are at the peak, at the, at, the, at the door of your breakthrough. You are already at the door. And any moment from now, God will usher you into it spiritually. And you shall begin to see the manifestations of the blessings of God in your life. Because every time the people of God seek the face of the Lord, God always pour down blessings. He said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face. He says, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. God is healing our lives. God is healing our land. God is healing Nakuru town. God is healing our businesses. God is moving right now in every facet of our life. We shall begin to testify of his goodness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn with me in your Bible to Psalms. Psalms uh, chapter 31, verse 13. Our topic today is evil attempt against my life be aborted in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's my prayer that every evil agenda of the enemy 
every evil attempt of Satan against your business, against your family, against your ministry, against your life, shall be aborted in the name of Jesus. They shall be aborted in the name of Jesus because the Lord God is on our side. Psalm 31 verse 13. For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side while they took counsel together against me and they devised to take away my life. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my God. Hallelujah. It says, for I fear the slander of many. There are, you know, you know, so many enemies around. Life is full of enemies. As a matter of fact, this earth that we are in, they are full of people who ate, who ate the fact that you are going to succeed. They are full of enemies. Some are enemies that you know, some are enemies that you don't know. But the fact remains that enemies are everywhere. And God wants us to be aware of them. The Bible told us, it says, be not ignorant of the devices of the enemies. Meaning, God is saying, be aware. Be aware. Even the Bible told us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion looking for whom to devour. My prayer for somebody here today is that Satan will not find you. You didn't hear me. When Satan stands up to attack people, your name will not be amongst them. The enemy that is looking for the downfall of people, of innocent people, they will not find you. God will protect you. God will shield you from their attack in the name of Jesus. When you see things happen in the lives of, of, of people, sometimes it is not their mistakes. Sometimes it is not their own doing. It is the work of the enemy. It is the work of the adversary. And today in the name of Jesus, lift up your hand right now. In the name of Jesus, every work of an adversary against your life, against my life, against our ministry, today, let them cast fire right now. Let them be destroyed. Let them be frustrated. Say a big amen. Shut fire in the name of Jesus. There are wicked men everywhere. There are wicked men. The book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 5. Open your Bible. Jeremiah 5 verse 26. For among my people are found wicked men. My God. If you have NIV, open it. NIV. NIV. Can we get NIV? Mm. Are you here today? Are you here today? My God. For among my people are found wicked men. What does this wicked man do? They lay await. Oh God. It says, uh, who lie in wait like men who snare beds and like those who set traps to catch people. You are there living your life. You are there planning your own thing. But there's an enemy somewhere setting trap to catch you. I prophesy tonight, any trap of the enemy that he has laid in wait on your path, today, the fire of God consume them right now. I say the fire of God consume them right now. The fire of God consume them right now. In the name of Jesus. The next verse, 27 like cages full of the birds their houses are full of deceit they have become rich and powerful 
There are people who have become rich by wickedness. There are people who have become rich by corruption. How many of you know that corruption in a system is a system of robbing the poor to make one person rich? It's a devilish system. It's a satanic system. We live in a world where people want to take advantage of his fellow brother. We live in a world where this one wants to push this one down for him to rise. We live in a world where this one don't want this one to succeed. We live in a world where only one man wants to have everything so that every others will look up to him. And the Bible said they have become rich. They have become powerful through wickedness. We live in that world where people want to oppress every man so that only him is rising. But I prophesy tonight that in the name of Jesus, that in the name of Jesus, anyone that is taking advantage of you, anyone that is stealing what belongs to you, that thing that should have come to you and they are taking it, God will judge them tonight. I said, God will judge them tonight. I said, God will judge them tonight. In the name of Jesus, wickedness everywhere. You must not be ignorant of the fact that there are people who don't like you. If God opened your eye to see the heart of people towards you, you would be shocked. Even the Bible told us the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? You can see a man laughing with you, smiling with you, but his heart, his intention is evil. Today, God will expose them by fire. I said the Lord will expose them by fire. Wherever they will hide from, God will fish them out. In the name of Jesus, you may be shocked that some of the things that you are going through in life are as a result of one person somewhere who has refused that you rise. It's as a result of somebody somewhere doing something, speaking negative about you. He has seen that this man loves you and wants to help you, but he's spoiling you. He's blackmailing you. He's talking negative about you so that that man's heart is poisoned against you and never like you. And you are there wondering, is this help not coming? Why is this favor not coming? Because somebody somewhere is plotting evil against your life today. I say today. I say today. The Lord will judge them by fire. I say the Lord will abort their plans. The Lord will abort their devices. In the name of Jesus. You know, sometimes you may feel that it is because of what you have done. You don't need to do anything to make the wicked man hate you. You don't need to do anything. Did you read what, what God's word says in Psalm chapter 2, verse 1? He said, why do the Eden rage? And the people imagine a vain thing against the Lord and his anointed. Why? 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 Why do they rage? Why are they angry about God? Why are they angry about you? Why do they eat and rage? Sometimes you did not do anything to warrant their wickedness. You see, all of a sudden, your husband started misbehaving towards you. And you feel that because you are not dressing in certain pattern, you are not doing certain things. No, it is as a result of certain demonic power that has been released over his mind to begin to develop hatred towards you. Sometimes you did not do anything to warrant wickedness of the devil. You did not do anything evil to warrant the attack. The Bible told us in Psalm 50, Psalm 59, Psalm 59, verse 3 and verse 4. Psalm 59, verse 3 and verse 4. Look at what David says. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. Mm. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression. I didn't do anything. 
I did not do anything. What did Samson do to Delilah that made Delilah want to kill him? What did Jesus do to Judas that made Judas sold him? What did he do? What did he do? This was a man going about feeding everybody. But yet a man among his men was planning to sell him out. What did he do? I'm not sure you know that Judas was one of a terrible man among Jesus' disciples. Very wicked man. What did he do? Sometimes you did not do. What did Jesus do that made them crucify him on the cross? Nothing. These were people whom he healed all their sick people. He gave them bread and fish. One time he got out 5,000 people. They have not eaten. He gave them food. What can a man do to help a man? One time 4,000. He gave them food to eat. Gave them bread to eat. He healed them. He cast out devils. He raised their dead. Yet these same people rose up and said crucify him. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? You did not do anything because sometimes Satan, you know, you know, poison your heart and make you start feeling guilty and say it is because of my sin, because I've done this, because I've done that. That is why so and so thing is happening to me. No, you have not done anything. And even if you have done anything, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your life right now to watch away every sin, every transgressions, every mistakes in the name of Jesus. Shout a big amen. For Lord, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me. Not small, small people. The mighty ones. Not for my transgression. Nor for my sin, O oh Lord. Read on. Mm. They run and set themselves uh, without my fault. Awake to help me, O oh God. David says, arise to help me. Arise to help me from the hands of this wicked man. Sometimes the reason why you are where you are today is because there is one wicked man ahead of you blocking your doors. Uh, there is one satanic agent in your village uh, in your name uh, to a witch doctor am i talking to somebody here today and you see all kind of disappointment all kind of failure and things don't work and you are so smart and you are so intelligent yet you are going nowhere because there is an enemy somewhere plotting your life there's an enemy somewhere setting up against you but today in the name of jesus christ every enemies of our destiny every enemies of our rising whatever plan whatever plot that they have set against us the fire of god shall descend upon them i said the fire of god shall descend upon them in in the name of Jesus. Life is difficult when you have enemies around you. Did you hear me? Life is difficult when you have enemies around you. But when you have friends, supporters around you, life is easy. How many of you know that? When you have people who believe in you, your life is easy. But when you have people who always oppose you, life is hard. No wonder the Bible said in Psalm 23 verse 5. Open it 23 verse 5. Psalm 23 verse 5. Look it, look it, look it, look it right now. It says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. What happens now? You anointed my head with oil. Anointing your head with oil means he's protecting you. Oh God, you didn't hear me. It means God is marking you, say, touch not my anointed. Because it is not easy to operate within your enemies. God says, I can prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies, but I also need to protect you. It is not enough to defeat the enemy, but to start eating in their presence, to start progressing in their presence. They will not take it lightly. But I will protect your life. Oh my God. 
So I prepare a table and anointed your head. Your head means your life. I'm talking to somebody here today. Because God understands that life is not easy when you have enemies around you. Look at what Solomon said. What Solomon said about his father in First King chapter 5, uh, verse 3 to verse 4. Solomon was telling certain, certain people, he says, you know now how that David, my father, could not build a house unto the name of the Lord his God because of the walls which were around him on every side until the Lord had to put them under the soles of his feet. One of the reasons why God will defeat enemies. One of the reasons why God will abort their plan is so that your life becomes easy. Is so that your life skyrocket. Is so that your plans come to pass. Is so that you shine. Am I talking right now? So that you grow. So that you grow in life. So that you succeed in your endeavor. That's why God will judge them. He says, until he put them under his feet. David could not build a house. How can you build a house when you are busy fighting war? When there are enemies all around you. Today, this battle. Tomorrow, that battle. Next week, that battle. Only you fighting different battles. You cannot have peace. David could not have peace when enemies are all around you. That's why some people today, they cannot arise. They can't climb to the heights that God has set for them. Why? Because of series of battle. They get job today, one month they have fired them. They have money to start business, one month that business is finished. They have entered into a relationship, suddenly that man vanished. They have some people who can help them, suddenly... They refuse to start picking his calls. Am I talking to somebody here today? You can never arise when enemies are fighting your life. That is why God will answer them tonight. I said that's why God will answer them tonight. Are you with me here today? That's why God will abort their plans. I prophesy upon this mountain by the grace of God's servant that in the name of Jesus, every agenda of hell against your marriage, against your children, against your business, against your school, let them be aborted by fire. Be aborted by fire. Be aborted by fire. Be aborted by fire. Shout amen. Glory to God. The Bible says, let and join and together. The wicked will not go unpunished. Mm. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 21. Proverbs 11, 24, and then I'll give you keys on how to abort satanic plants. Proverbs 11. It says, though and join in hand. <laughs> it doesn't matter where they are. <laughs> Do hand join in hand. My God. Maybe they are in your village. Maybe they are in your workplace. And they are conniving and talking and planning your downfall. Bible says, Do hand join hand together. The wicked shall never be unpunished. They will never escape punishment. So I don't care who is planning or plotting against you. The punishment of God is coming upon their life. Your amen is too small. I said the punishment of God is coming upon them tonight. It's coming upon them tonight. Come on, shout amen like thunder. Shout amen like thunder. Shout amen like thunder. They will never succeed. In their endeavors. Three keys that you can apply to abort satanic plans in your life. Number one, you must learn to walk and operate in the consciousness that you are a covenant child of God. It is so important. 
If you don't know who you are, Satan will mess you up. One of the platforms that Satan thrives to in oppressing people is ignorant. For my people are destroyed. For what? For what? Hosea 4 6. People are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Which knowledge? Knowledge, I mean, not having knowledge of their identity in God. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Open it. First John 4, verse 4. My God. First John 4, verse 4.